Yeah, there's videos of uh, me on GoPro screaming like, ah! Because <laughs> the other thing was I was like popping my head up and I couldn't see anybody because the way is, but I could hear other people going, ah! Ah! like freaking out. I was like, this is it. We're the one tourist group that will forever be remembered. Yeah. Yeah. You are listening to Studio 22. Welcome to Studio 22. I am Will Meldman, and this is my co-host, Brock O'Hearn. And we are here with the amazing Nolan Gould. Yes. Very special guest today. Pronounced it right. And we are happy to dive in. <laughs> I thought it was Norman. Was like Norman, Norman Gould. That's me. The one Norman Osborne. Oh, man. Thanks for coming on, bro. Yeah, they, thank you guys for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm very jealous of, of your bobble. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a special uh, birthday gift from Brock. World's best co-host. You didn't get him something back? I, what did I get you I'm back? I'm so I glad someone finally said something. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Your side of the table is kind of all decked out. And yeah, I'm over here with just my coffee. It's yeah. Cool. I've got well, him well. something, but I forget what it was. No, you, remember, you got me a ton of stuff uh, for the, for the birthday. Oh yeah. It was like, I got him like survival gear. I got him like this cool, like uh Kevlar hand grenade. That's not a grenade, but it's like, <laughs> it has like 45 tools inside of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, And then like kindling for like, camping and stuff. I got like a bunch of fun outdoor stuff that like wouldn't look good on the table. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really into all that stuff, uh, camping outdoors, hiking, yeah. like all that. And, and Same. yeah, it's, it's a good time. Awesome. That's what my, if you saw my truck out front. I, oh yeah. It's like yeah, a, yeah. like a Tonka, like toy truck. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah took my I imagination the, in that space and threw it on that. The little thing. boy in me was very jealous yeah, of dude. that. Same, same. He, was nice enough to take me with him to uh, Joshua Tree. Yeah. And we just did a night out there. And like that thing can go anywhere it wants. Yeah. So you're like, you can pick anywhere in like the giant. And just drive. Yeah. Oh my God. It was awesome. Very and I, I had like this little janky REI tent and he had like the tent on top of the <laughs> yeah. truck. That's like this giant massive fortress. It was pretty yeah. funny. Dude, I, t I take it back. Your bobblehead's not that cool anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. Oh man, it's all good. It's good. It's good for this. It's, it's more sentimental. Yeah. My gifts were more practical. <laughs> no, yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, man. So, uh, you started acting pretty young, right? Yeah. Uh, very, very young. I, uh, I started around like five years old and you know it's up for debate how much of that is really acting at, at that point um you know i wasn't doing groundbreaking work. <laughs> won his first oscar at six years yeah, old yeah, yeah, no. i mean there are some child prodigies like that but you know i started i think my first if you want to call this role was um i got to play a dog in a community theater production of boxcar children which was this like um, book series about kids. And I, and I played the dog, but I didn't even get to play the dog by myself. I had to split the costume like halfway at like, no. oh, like the front half time. It, yeah. No, no, oh, no, yeah. No, no, like, <laughs> like the horse, you know, at, someone's at, the back. At, like at intermission. So, like and I had to switch it off with another guy. <laughs> got it, got it, got uh, it. Sometimes I wonder where <laughs> he is. <laughs> yeah. That's I hope hilarious. he can continue down on his, his path yeah. of being a thespian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's pretty incredible, dude. You, you got half a credit, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it's awesome. Um, so that, that experience in theater kind of prompted more into the acting stuff. Yeah, well, you know, it was a, we had an interesting introduction to it. So I'm from, um, I'm from, from Phoenix City, Alabama. Um, my, my dad is ex-military and so we like moved around the country a lot and we kind of just fell into it. Uh, my brother is a genius, um, like by all, like, you know, um, definitions of the word. Um, I like, I technically am, but. I'm just like, I'm like barely, like I, I barely made the cut. He like definitely is. And so we're just like super advanced. And my mom was looking for like anything to try to like keep us occupied because my brother was like, like a, like a 12th grade reading level at like six years old. He's oh, like, wow. yeah, insane, huh. like actual prodigy. And so for us, it was acting because, it, and you know, we're starting out there in Mobile, Alabama. It was like, you got an audition maybe once a month, but it was just something to keep our minds occupied, reading plays, doing like all these you know, throwing plays in our own home, just trying to be creative. Uh, and then we got moved out to LA and then it, it, everything kind of just fell into play. Like none of this was expected. Like what started yeah. off as like a hobby to just like entertain ourselves suddenly became my whole life. And the next thing you know, I'm like 
on a show for 11 years. And I was like, wait a second, wait a second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed to be a kid. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. So that experience like on modern family for the first time, I mean, did you, did you have any inclination that that was going to go that long? Like, did you, how, what was it like the kind of that first experience being that young? Yeah. I uh, definitely had no framework for, for understanding what I was getting into. I think I had had like a lot of friends who had, you know, been able to do like a pilot of a show or maybe their show went on for half season and got canceled. And so in my mind, it, it wasn't even until like three season three of the show that it like clocked. And I was like, Oh, I think I, I think I have a job <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because like, especially in this, this business is like, it's so much rejection and like even amazing shows get, you know, canceled or don't work out for whatever reason. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I was so prepared for my family to be a failure. And then it just like, it, yeah, it wasn't until like much later on where like, even like season seven, like we're like, we're, we're doing this guys. Like this is, I think we're, I think we're good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we're, I think we're employed. Uh, I think we can relax a little. People are liking this yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's really interesting how like even, season three, four, five, or whatever it is, you kind of still mentally prepare yourself for anything. Yeah. Yeah. I guess just like the, the disappointment, um, was trying to like prepare to like, like maybe it would feel better if I was expecting the show to end. And like now looking back at it, I was like, that's kind of like the, the wrong mindset. I think, mm. think going into that, um, and if like, if I could go back in time, I'm like, oh man, just like like calm down and like enjoy the scenery and enjoy this like experience. Right. Um, without all of the anxieties that like that come with that. But I, you know, I'm an yeah. actor, so I'm always going to be. Yeah. That's kind of <laughs> standard practice when it comes yeah, to acting. Exactly. Right? Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. I'm yeah, yeah. so insecure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for these crystals right yeah, here. The They're crystals helping me help. eliminate my insecurities. Yeah. I was, I was talking <laughs> that's about, why we got him there. <laughs> I was talking about a buddy about that too. Like the, just all the, the anxiety, the stress, the rejection, um, and even me, like I'm a very large masculine man, but I was yeah. like, I was like, I'm very sensitive man. All right. Yeah. So yeah. it's part of the, you know, the whole deal, man. And, it, and doing something like that, it's like, yeah, you never know where it's going to go, but, uh, it, dude, it oh. definitely went places. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Incredible show, man. And you, you, you absolutely kill it on it, obviously. And, yeah. uh, yeah, man, were you able to work on other stuff a lot during the process or was it a very selective, like, uh, were you able to pick and choose or was it just kind of like if the time worked out for it? Yeah, you know, it's um it it, it was it's a kind of complicated to answer that because there's like so much that goes into that of like yes, like projects I wanted yeah. to work on, but um all kinds of like crazy contractual legal stuff. It's mm -hmm. like if you're not back in LA by this time of year, like like you know, I'm right. I guess I'm like contractually beholden to like modern family I always had to come first no matter what I did. Yeah. Um you know, wasn't allowed to do like things for like other networks sometimes, um, wasn't allowed to like, like produce things. Um, and I think that's, that's kind of like standard practice in the industry. It's starting to like change a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I did get the opportunity to go and work on some other projects. Um, but mainly it was modern family took eight months out of the year to film. Um, wow. and then we had like four months off for summer and, you know, I think like starting at, you know, I started the show when I was 10 years old. And so, working for like eight months straight, not, you know, I had to do school, um, online. We had, um, we actually had like a set teacher. And so we had like a little mock classroom that all the kids went to. It was really cute. <laughs> um, but basically kind of like being away from like my youth for like those eight months and being in a very like working environment. It's awesome as it was when, the, when, when it came to an end, I was kind of like, well, I'm going to take four months to like enjoy summer. Yeah. I think that's kind of where I started to pick up like traveling and, and the outdoors is, kind of interests and hobbies. Um, but I did get to go work on it. I get to do like um, this movie, Friends Friends with Benefits. Oh yeah. Yeah. Great film, yeah. And like yeah. A, a couple other great, great, great comedies I got to do. Was it, did they ever, were they ever lax with you with the, with the homework and stuff? You're like, guys, come on, I got 12 <laughs> pages tomorrow. Like, <laughs> uh, man, I, you know, <laughs> I know I, like that's, you, you know, you hear like, like horror stories in like Hollywood of what happens to like young actors. And we got like incredibly lucky with our show that everyone was actually like looking out for us. Mm. And so was I ever, did I ever get to like be lax with homework? No, uh, yeah. <laughs> they made sure that I like got my education. Um, 
you know, like at, like at minimum you're required, like if you're even going to step foot on a set, even mm-hmm. if it's for like 30 minutes, you are required to do three hours of school for like every time you step on a set. Oh, wow. wow. Um, and so, yeah, I, um, but I ended up going kind of like a circuitous route with my education. Ended up, um, we might need a definition on that one. <laughs> uh oh. Give me, give me a five <laughs> ten. <laughs> a roundabout. Like way. circumvent? Like yeah, circumvent. Okay. I kind of circumvented the, uh, the whole like normal school system. I ended up um, <laughs> like finishing high school at like 13 and a half. Um, Whoa, wow. And then like going to community college for like two years. And so I was done with all of school um, and like had my associates by like the time I was basically like 16. So that Incredible. set education must have been really, really good, right? Well, or was it he, kind he, of more he, of like what you were doing on top of that and then he, advancing into that? He also has 150 IQ, so. Uh, did you, did you, yeah, I Googled it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well that's, okay. How, would, um, how the, would you compare that set education to like a standard one, would you say? I mean, because it sounds like you, obviously it worked or something. Yeah, Um, I don't think I would have done well like sitting in a normal classroom mm. setting. I think that um, I'm like, I'm very creative. And so, and you know, I think what happens with a lot of, um, you know, young people going through school is it's really hard to like sit still and, you know, do kind of like menial labor and like what, you know, is basically like yeah. low grade accounting, uh, right. just, just like doing numbers and stuff for like for kids. We want to get out and like explore and create and like use our bodies and use our minds. And, um, so I, I got very lucky that I got to like, be in a, a setting that allowed me to kind of grow up, grow and go at my own pace. And that's why I think I kind of like, I got through school really fast so I could get to other things that I think my brain was a little more like well, well suited for. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's really interesting to hear because like we talked a lot with Randy Gerber about like mm. creatives in like a standardized kind of system. Yeah. Cause like, you know, Brock and I, kind of both have that kind of creative mindset as well and kind of learn that way. Um, I'm a very like visual learner and all that. And and we were kind of talking about how usually it's later in life that creatives are able to, are able to like really manifest, you know, some of their thoughts and ideas and like really able to kind of fit into the system. Yeah. Um, versus those like standardized tests and all that type of structure. Yeah. Um, yeah. It sounds like, it sounds like you did a really good job at that as a creative mind, like yeah. getting that done early. Just, guess, just get through it. You yeah. Know, like yeah. You're required to have like some knowledge of fractions and yeah. geometry yeah. and all of that. But I just knew that that wasn't for me and where my heart really like lay was like in storytelling and um, performing. And so to be able to like kind of like get through that. And now, now we're into like what I really want to do. Um, that's, that's and then also like it opens up a bunch of things like on set. I could, I was now not required to do the like three hours of school because I, I was done with it. Yeah, you finished it. <laughs> and so then I got to spend more time like being like actually like embroiled into that um, kind of like creative world and really getting like soak it in. Hell yeah. You're speaking about being creative. Uh, what is that for you? Is it, it outside of just acting? Is Are you into yeah. writing, uh, producing, uh, directing, uh, or other things outside of that? You know, we have a comic book. Uh, that's a fun yeah. outlet for creative. There- yeah. Well, we have, me and my friends have yet to find a way to make any of our creativity, like, financially, like, feasible <laughs> <laughs> or, like, profitable. Um, but I do, like, creating and, and storytelling sometimes just, for the sake of doing mm. it. And we haven't always found like a way to, to like really, I like, I love coming up with stories and then like, and like writing them all out of my head. And then when I sit down to actually write, I'm like, what was this for? I just wanted to tell my friends about mm. this. Now I'm like, um, but yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I'm very lucky in that my friend group here now, I like really prioritizes creativity. Um, my roommate is like the most talented improver I ever met. And so, you know, we're always creating something at all times. Um, we write a lot together. Um, been in like the, stuck in the pitching process for years now. Mm. Um, and it really gives you a lot of um, respect for what it's actually like, what it takes to make something Yeah, in this town, because it's not always up to you. Just be like, yeah, there are, there are people who are really incredible about like, 
I have a camera. I'm just going to go out and film stuff and make something happen. Um, and then there are people who are really good at, um, like doing the work that it takes to go through networks and producers and get like funding Mm. and make things happen. But either way, it gives you so much respect for like the fact that there's even things on TV. I'm like, how Yeah, (laughs) we've been working on a pilot for like four years now, just trying to get this stuff made. I mean, I feel that completely, um, 100%. And it's like, I think it's kind of good for people to hear as well as like, you know, if you have that project out there, like just keep on, keep on, um, you know, refining the pitch, yeah. keep on trying to get it out there. And it's like, no matter what, just, just keep working on it. And like, I, I definitely relate to the kind of like financially viable <laughs> with the creative projects yeah. because, you know, comic books, it's like, even if you're, whether you're, you kind of have to be Marvel or DC to yeah. make a lot of money in comics, like just sure. based off comic sales. And like the, the real kind of win for a comic is obviously like a show or a film. Yeah. And that's what we really want to do with it. Even though I absolutely love writing all of it and I'm like 50 issues written and I'm, I'm oh. literally writing oh, yeah. a new one right now. Um, Let's go. It's yeah. It's like based <laughs> in kind of the golden age of piracy. Yeah. So I'm like really fired up on this one. Hell yes. Um, but it's really just that creative exercise of writing and like our comic sales are good. Like I wouldn't say they're bad by any means, like yeah. especially for a brand new comic. Um, but it's really just about that outlet and getting it out there and the process of making it. Mm-hmm. And I totally feel that a hundred percent. I think for like, for me in this new year um, and this is something that I talked about with the people I create is, basically tying trying to untie in our mind, like the end result as being the reward Mm. as opposed to the actual process of creation. I think because, you know, there's a lot that can be said about our culture of like immediacy and like people who have like instant paths to like success and, um, you know, fame and money. and, And you can look at that and be like, well, I'm not, and you can compare and you're like this, this is taking so much work for me to get there. But if you can kind of like untether that in your brain is not like, I have to, why am I working so hard on this? And you know, taking a moment to like get to be grateful and be like, if this is actually something like some of the stories that um, I come up with feels like it's a story like I need to tell. And so it was like, you know, damn what anybody thinks about it and like, damn how like long it takes and, what it like takes from me, but like if it, it it feels like if it is something that you need to just like get out of your system mm. so you can sleep at night. Dude, <laughs> I feel that yeah. so much. Like sometimes what drives me to create the best is like I'm going insane. I've been stuck in my house for like two years during pandemic. Um I'm young, you know, and I like this would typically be the time that like, you know, I would be out like partying, going to bars, blah, blah, blah. But like everything's shut down. Like I'm in my house, just like thinking of crazy stuff, writing it on a whiteboard. Like I'm insane. <laughs> Calling my friends, yelling at them hey, about, about <laughs> yeah, you can see yelling about like aliens and conspiracies and all these weird things. I'm like, I- I'm not going to sleep unless I can get this out of my brain. <laughs> I literally great. had that same exact feeling. Like the other day, like yesterday mm. or the day before I couldn't sleep because I, I figured out the intro to the pirate yeah. thing I'm writing. And yeah. it's like, you know, the, the storm and like, you know, the princess prison imprisoned on the ship during yeah. a naval battle and like the lightning. And I, I don't want to like reveal too much, but it was like, and then we kind of switched tones over to like a more fun, interesting, like pirate vibe, which you've read it. Yeah. Well, that's great. Oh, so um, much fun. And, fun. and it's yeah. like, I yeah. had this pirate <laughs> legend of like this, impossible birth uh, like at sea during a storm during a naval battle yeah. like and i just couldn't sleep until i wrote it so i wrote it um you know in the middle of the night yeah and then i was able to sleep <laughs> i was like okay, <laughs> let's go by the way you guys are speaking my language because like there are some people and you know whatever story like you need to tell as, as a creative or whatever art you need to create i think it's great because there's so many people in the mm. world and so many people that are drawn to different stories and and different concepts. And some people love telling like really human stories about like, this is about a, you know, broken family dynamic. 
You guys are talking about pirates <laughs> and storms <laughs> and werewolves. Princesses. And werewolves. Like, yeah, yeah. If it doesn't have a flaming sword or a spaceship, <laughs> I don't want to watch it. Yeah, that's I don't want to read it. <laughs> I need some fantasy in there, you know? <laughs> we're the, no, I mean, we're in that same boat, man. And it's being creative for creative sake, too. It's yeah. like I, when I was young, um, I know I heard you mention you moved around a lot. I moved around a lot, but not because of military, just my, the way my family was. And, yeah. Um, the one thing I fell in love with was theater and mm. I remember getting a camera when I was 12 and I would force my brothers and sisters to like be flash and be Superman and like I would yeah, like yeah. edit it and, and and it was just ha having fun just filming being creative and I don't know how to edit dude and it was on film you know there's yeah. no way to do anything with oh, it, yeah, any of, of it but but it's just like that's the stuff that I loved I loved you know the superheroes growing up I love you know yeah. and that's what I wanted to embody as an actor as well and stories I want to tell and we get to have so much fun with our comic book just creating you know and, um one thing you did say though, like that, what right before we started into this too, is is um I love that advice that you gave because mm -hmm. I heard this thing not too long ago, and it was it was about the man who falls in love with walking will go farther than the man who falls in love with the destination. Oh hell yeah! And it's kind of a testament yeah, to what yeah. you're saying. You know, it's like falling in love with the process. You know, it's it's not about where you end up, and uh, you hear a lot of great people talk about that too. But it's it's about the journey, man. It's about everything in between, the struggle, you know, the, yeah, the adversity, like the all that stuff that we build up and overcoming that, just not giving up on what you believe in you know yeah the the other thing that like that's kind of similar to that that i'm trying to think about when it comes towards creativity and just a lot of things in my life which is basically that the whole world is at least it feels like it's going to tell you no mm. when it comes to a lot of things um you certainly hear it a lot as somebody trying to create um you hear it as you know somebody a performer an actor you the world's going to tell you, no, you're not good enough for this. No, that I'm like, I'm tired of telling it to myself in my head. And so again, not thinking about like that destination, but just being like, I want to, I want to be the guy who walks. If I'm going to use like your analogy, mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't care if I'm the, I, the guy who gets there. I'm at least going to believe that like, there's a chance I'm going to get there. And then like, I'll let everything else try like trip me up. But like, you know, everyone else is going to say like, no, this idea is not good. Or like, no, but until you're just like, the people who do get to make things is because like, I, I think that they just, they don't have like no, and they don't say no to themselves. Yeah. That way. Yep. There's, there's no quit, you know? Yeah. Um, what I've, I love quotes. Will Will's a great, you know, uh, <laughs> guy some, for some quotes quote as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're um, good too. You're good. No, I love them. But but on that note, you know, one, one quote that I do love is uh, believe in yourself more than anyone else ever could. Yeah. And I, I believe uh, because my whole life I was told, you know, you can't do this. That's impossible. You know, yeah. like, uh, you know, you're never going to move to LA. You're never going to be an actor. You're never going to, you know, do whatever you want to do. Uh, never going to be fit. You know, I heard, I heard everything was very yeah. skinny growing up. And, now look at you, dude. Well, you know, I, I work out a little bit every now and again, but it's the consistency of it. And it was just that belief in myself where I found that if I believe in myself enough and I keep working, yeah. I keep moving forward, eventually somebody else is going to. And then the people that said never is going to happen, start asking you, how did you do it? You know? Yeah. And it really is just, it's just not quitting, you know? Yeah, yeah. So many great stories we wouldn't have, so many great films and shows if, if these people gave up, you know, it took, yeah. some of them took a decade, some, some more, you know? I, I think there's a fine line between like seeking out constructive criticism versus yeah. like just kind of giving up and taking it as actual <laughs> yeah, criticism yeah, yeah. right on your rough I, craft too yeah like, oh, right. it's over <laughs> i have a love and do what you will right here oh cool it's a saint augustine quote from like 395 ad it's yeah. like when the barbarians sacked rome they blamed like the catholic church and um it was kind of the beginning of protestantism and western uh catholicism where it's like look the buildings are not your faith like your faith is internal yeah and um you know protestantism is more faith-based and Catholicism is more service-based. Mm. Um, but I just love that quote because it's like, literally, if you're doing what you love, yeah, ignore everything else because that is God in the universe telling you that it's the right thing to do. And the universe will support you even if you're actually truly listening to something you love. And like, you can't do it for the wrong reasons or else the sure. universe will acknowledge that as ego and not proper yeah um you know like passion um but yeah anyway that's like a little tangent on no no the tattoo but it's very indicative hey, hey, of man, what I, we're saying. I just got my my first tattoo on, on, on new year's this year 
Is um, it a, like the hourglass? Yeah, it's an hourglass. Yeah, I oh, love that. Cool. My giant rock climbing hands are trying really hard to just <laughs> reject the ink right now. So it's. No, yeah. Sometimes um, but, you got to like go over them again. Yeah. In like a year. Is a thin line hourglass. And like the reason I got it was, you know, it's a lot of the same reason, which is like in a very polite way, reminding myself that like time's kind of running out mm. and it's not like a, uh, an anxiety, like you got to get everything done. It's just do what you were meant to like what you were put here to do and you actually want to do. And I think that there's, you know, so many people for a lot of different reasons. And, you know, a lot of it's like circumstantial that like people don't, you know, for financial reasons or life reasons, don't get to pursue the life that they want to live. But like, all we really know is like, okay, this is where you guys will have to reel me in if I go, because I go down <laughs> tangents. <It's> but, <laughs> believe me, guys, two years spent alone in my house is enough to make, you know, hey, I'll dude, talk about thing, this bro. stuff forever. Um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, like all we can like, I think this is what I was saying, is that all we can like really prove is like, I am here now. Yep. And so might as well do what I want to do in this, in this time period while I've got this, because all yeah. I know I really have is like, is now in the present. And I think so many people don't get the chance to do that. That like, if you have the opportunity like to do what you were put here on this earth, do then yeah. that way that you feel in your heart. That Absolutely. You to I, uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough to make a lot of friends who, you know, from all walks of life, you know, I really only like to invite people that are good people into my life and regardless yeah. of whatever their status or financial, whatever it may be. But one of my friends had a, uh, he had, has a very successful grandfather who sold a company for a billion dollars. And oh, wow. I remember meeting him for the first time on, to your point, um, and his eyesight was going out. They had just amputated one of his legs. The another one's coming, you know, and I had, you know, 10 bucks to my name or something like that when yeah. I met him. Um, and again, just became a billionaire and very successful. And I remember him looking at me and he mentioned how in shape I was. And he was like, I would give everything just to have your health. Yeah. And I remember that moment it hit me so hard. It was years and years ago. And I was just like, man, like we, so many of us put that ide ideology or that idea that we need to be, you know, financially successful, be a billionaire, yeah. be a hundred million or whatever it may be. Uh, and then that's the, what success is. And I, and I really yeah. made me real of like, I have a limited amount of time. I got, I'm just going to do what I love, man. And, you know, you know, God willing, you know, I'll have success in it regardless, but at the end of the day, I'm going to be happy. That's going to be my goal. And I'm going to focus yeah. on my health and my family and my friends and the things that really matter. And uh, I love storytelling, man. So that's what I want to do. And, and, and I, I'll use my body, I'll use my mind, I'll use, you know, everything I can to, to do that. And it really is a testament of like, we have only this now. All we have is I, this moment I, now. I would have weeped if somebody had said that. Oh yeah, I would man. have been a yeah. sobbing mess. Yeah, well, I've, I've, I've shed my, my <laughs> fair share of tears, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, man. Sounds like a powerful moment for sure. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's those, for me, I call them like defining moments in, in my life, whether it's a quote, whether it's uh, uh, someone yeah. sharing, you know, something like that with me. And I like to take those moments and, add them into to my life and kind of keep growing it from there. And uh, the things that really matter, you know, like I see people driving their cars and it's and I'm, I'm all for like having, you know, good stuff. And if that's what you love, all yeah, that, course. but, but it's, yeah. I don't put my value or my worth in, in, in a material item, you know, and yeah. it's, it's how do I show up in the world and how do, how are the people going to remember me? You know what I yeah. mean? Like, was I kind? Was I good? Was I generous? Was, was, was I a good person? You know? Um, and that's kind of how I, I like to move forward. And, you know, because of that, like I got friends like Will, you know, and, uh, um, <laughs> and, and so many good people in my life, dude. And it's like, I get to look around and be like, I'm surrounded by love, you know, like it's yeah. at the end of the day, like I've, I've met multiple people that, you know, you think have it all and it's, they're miserable, man. And it's like, that's, yeah. that's not the end goal. I don't think, you know, at yeah. least not for me. No, I agree. I think there's, um, all kinds of ways to find self-worth and happiness. And like, if, you know, the best advice you can like get is to kind of go for a like is to figure out what that is, not just what, like what you think. Cause I think mm -hmm. a lot of people it's like, right. They think that they wanted to get, you know, a million dollars, a billion dollars. And then when they get it, they're like, it, it was never that. Yeah. And you know, like, like for me, like on my end, what I'm realizing, like it's always been about for me, like connection, mm -hmm. um, connecting to like other human beings, getting to share intimate moments, like making new friends, getting to share life with other people. Um, and like, I, I, you know, I just also enjoy storytelling and I find it as a way to like connect with other human beings to like yeah. both give a gift and get a gift and also be on a set and work with people and have these moments. Um, and like, so that's what I get to t like take away. I'm like, I don't care like where the, the career goes as long as like I, I get to use my passion for storytelling to like bond with other human beings. Um, and that's, 
like that's a really healthy like I think wholehearted way of yeah. of looking at that is like I don't you don't care about you know the Instagram followers or like what is just about that is the thing that like, I'm like, Oh, I've, I've got self-worth because I'm like, I got to, you know, touch people's lives and like have them be a part of mine as well. Yeah. I mean, that's your, I, your turn. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You top that. <laughs> I can't first off. Like, I, I have a question based off that. <laughs> I read I read we're one gonna, Brene Brown self help book in quarantine, was, and here we are now. We're just gonna hit, we're gonna try to totally. we just keep trying to one up self help each other. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, dude. So when I was saving seventeen Wait. children from the burning, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Saved a cat from a tree yesterday. Actually, yeah. beat the firefighters to it. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I I like what you said in there about like. Because film and TV, like being on a set, it's the most collaborative art form yeah. in the world. Yeah. And um, I really love that aspect of it, too. I think it can make it more like stressful in certain situations oh, yeah. than yeah. just like sitting by a fire or outside writing, right? Like in perfect, tranquil serenity. <laughs> yeah. um, but it also can make it more rewarding yeah. because you have other people out there that you're connecting with and learning from and, and doing all that with. Um, when I think of, you know, when I like think of Modern Family, I, I immediately think of like The Office, mm. right? It's like Modern Family was kind of ABC's The Office and The Office for NBC. Yeah. Because they're both just two shows that went forever that everybody loves. And it just seems like, and like when we talk to like Ben Silverman about The Office, it's like, you know, he's very close friends with like a lot of the people on it still. And it just seems like it was a very similar environment where they're, you just have these two record-breaking amazing shows that yeah. you can watch on repeat forever. <laughs> and um, it, it, you know, I know you kind of touched on it earlier, but it seems like that was a very tight knit yeah. kind of community that you guys kind of set up. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, like it's, I don't, I don't even know what to compare it to because it becomes your whole life. And so these people become like, your family and, but they're also like the people you work with. And for me, like the people I went to school with and your friends, family, loved one, it gets wrapped up in this, just, it's such an interesting dynamic. And, you know, you get paired together with these strangers who, you know, at the beginning we had no clue where it was going to go. Now I'm like, you know, emotionally inseparable from these people. Um, you know, I, I'm lucky that I have a connection still with everybody. Um, you know, unfortunately, so our show ended literally two weeks before Los Angeles went to shut down and everybody, you know, parted ways to like different parts of the country. Some people live in Texas, some people live in Utah, some people live in New York. And I've gotten really lucky in the last couple months, you know, we always stayed in contact, you know, via phone and text, but like to really get to like spend some time with people, um, I've gotten to see like Julie, the woman uh, who played my mom. I get to see her a lot more than I was seeing like early pandemic. And it's just now that there's been like time to kind of like oddly, like actualize the loss of it's hard to describe. Like, I mean, I was like, I'm not going to cry when they yell, like that's a finishing picture. I was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. And like, even when they're like, all right, that, you know, cause they read off all our names. Like that's uh you know, that's a wrap on Rico Rodriguez. And like, they were like, they listed off the, how much time and energy we had all put into it. It was crazy. Like after 250 episodes, 11 years, I don't even know what it was. It was something like, I'm going to get the math wrong on this, but like 1400 working days. Oh um, like, oh yeah. Wow. Like modern family has like, has come to an end. And I was just a sobbing. I was like, uh, I was like, this is just like snot come. I was like, oh, my man. soul yeah. was pouring out of me. Um, oh. I haven't like really ever cried like that. And so it, you know, honestly it took some time to kind of like cope with that and actualize that loss. And now that like, I'm like, okay, I can respect that that's closed and over now. And now I can actually oddly invite it back into my life. And like, mm hang out with my co you know, co-stars and be like, that was crazy that we actually did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's beautiful to hear too. Yeah. And like, I feel like that energy, you know, definitely kind of manifested itself in the show as well. And it, if I was using the office comparison, 
the one caveat I would put in there is there were no children in the yeah. office, right? Yeah. So like it, you could say modern family was definitely more of like a family <laughs> to yeah. use the word family, yeah, yeah. but it's like, you know, um, like you said, like starting at age 10, um, and I guess going to 21, is that yeah. 10 to 21? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, like it, you really are kind of sharing, sharing your life. That's, that's cool though. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. Do you have any, I mean, obviously 11 years is a very long time, 1400 working day or whatever it may be. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have any favorite moments that happened on set or, or, you know, stuff over the years that really stand out to you? <sighs> yeah. I mean, there, there's, there's so many and like, because it's, it's been such a long time, like 250 episodes, like you start to forget and like, you'll go back and like, I'll watch an episode here or there. And I'm like, I don't remember filming that. I don't know these wow. jokes. I don't remember the storyline because it, my head got fi so filled with it. Um, but definitely some amazing moments, uh, you know, like life imitated art and vice versa a lot with our show. Um, at some point we ended up, becoming our characters and our characters were like reflections of us. Um, definitely like a lot of standouts, like, like Ty, Ty Burrell who played Phil, who played my dad on the show, like actually ended up teaching me like how to shave in real life. Wow. <laughs> yeah. He like oh, taught yeah. me. He was like, wow. I was like one day I was like, I came into like the makeup trailer and I was like, I think I'm, I think I'm starting to like get facial hair. I don't know <laughs> what to, I don't know what to do about this. And he like bought me like my first ever and like taught me how, and it became this like, I mean, there really is that dynamic of like, you're right, like having kids on the set is like suddenly changes, like, oh, we're not coworkers. There's like, we are a family. We've got people to like look out for. We've got like feeling, we got, you know, make sure like we've got kids on a working set. We need to make sure they're okay and taken care of. And totally. Um, and also just like anytime we got to travel, like Modern Family took us some amazing places. We got to go to like Hawaii the first season. We got to go to, uh, Wyoming and do like an episode on a dude ranch in like season oh, yeah. three. We did yeah. Disneyland. We did Australia. We did Vegas. We did uh, Paris. Um, and anytime getting to just travel with like, just imagine like 80 of your friends just like right. chartering a, a whole plane and getting to go to like Australia and like film in these like incredible locations while doing something you love was just like, well, I'm like, and we, like sometimes we talk about it like wistfully, me and the rest of the cast, like, we're never going to get that like ever again. Yeah. And like, in a way, like I, you know, I'm just so grateful. Like we got that. Yeah. So few people get to have that. And I'm, yeah. I, I, I will never like ever take like that kind of stuff for granted. It's just like the pure luck of getting to do that as an actor and the way it's like, it touched people and, you know, went into people's uh, like, homes for 11 years and they watched it with like, like TV doesn't really do that anymore. Like it has mm. with, with streaming and it, it's really hard to find like shows where like people sat down to watch like commercial breaks and all with their family. And it was like every, I think Wednesday night, like they knew like I'm sitting down, like everyone's going to yep. make sure they're, they're home from work or home from their friend's house so we can watch together and like talk about it. Um, Dude, and that's, it, that's it's cool. so spread out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I'm about to start crying right now. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's like, wow. Shall we actually hold hands guys? Yeah. <laughs> 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 the, um, oh man. That's really cool to hear. I, I feel like traveling probably would have been my, some of my favorite oh, yeah. stuff too. Yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome. So would you say it was the show then, uh, to kind of segue, would that really started your passion for traveling? Cause you lo love to travel, right? Yeah. I, I don't know where, it came from, I, I do love travel. I think, yeah, the, like, I think the show might have helped me get out of, like, the country for the first time. Um, gosh, I don't know if I had, I, I could be wrong in saying this, I might not have ever been on a plane. Wow. Like, yeah, like, I drove around the States a lot as a kid, but um, I would say, like, definitely inspired me. And then, like, again, you're just, like, I, I'm a kid not in school, and suddenly I have, like, four months off, like, what? what do I, what do I do? And I, I end up falling in love with traveling and just being outside and yeah, exploring the world. What are some of the more recent trips you've done that have really been cool? Let me think about, I, so I've gotten the chance to go to, I, I don't want to, this just sound like I'm bragging about my world travels, but um, I, you know, I've gotten to go to, to uh, Austria to go skiing. Um, you know, I, I went to, uh, I've got to go to like South Korea and, and Bali that was like pre pandemic. The, the big one that I, I did recently was, um, 
I went to Norway um, to go uh, snorkeling with orcas. It was, uh, that's, that's a it, casual also, drop also right there. Yeah, yeah. Killer whales. Uh, <laughs> what? Tell us about that, man. What yeah. was that like? Yeah. So, I mean, it was an experience. It's really hard, hard to put into words, but... Um, my my friend Chris is over there, so I, <laughs> what up, Chris? <laughs> Can't talk too bad about him, but um, <laughs> yeah, we we've been diving all over the world together, and we had this opportunity to go see killer whales. They uh, basically they chase herring, this prey fish, up um, into like the Nordic fjords, and like for a couple months, like I think during the winter. And so there's a pretty good chance that you can see them up there, but it's like, you know, they're wild animals. So it's like hit or miss. And right. like up until the day we left, we're like, are we doing this? Are we really like, we're going to uh, fly in Norway, doing with like the time change, getting on like a bus, like driving like eight hours into the middle of the fjords, getting on a boat, living on the boat for seven days, like on cruising a boat for seven days. Yeah. Cru- wow. Yeah. Cruising around these islands and fjords trying to find Killer whale. <laughs> uh, I was like, and like, I, you know, I came to the conclusion like, if that's how I die, I'm like, so be it. Like, you know, Modern Family star torn like torn limb from limb by killer whale. I was like, yeah, he died like he. Uh, that's a pretty cool way to. That's go. a cool way like, to go. If, yeah, I'm, if, gonna, yeah, if yeah. I have to go, like, so be it. Um, oh man. And so yeah, we were living on a, a boat for seven days, um, just like looking for these things. And some people go up there and never see them, and we got lucky. We saw them like four out of the seven days got to oh, get wow. in the water and have this really spiritual experience with a creature is the, you know, 30, you know, 30 feet long and could like <laughs> dare you apart if it wanted to. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was like hopping in freezing cold water, wearing dry suits, living on a boat and just like, so that you could have these like moments because that's how fast they move. And, you know, they're up there, they're hunting. And so it, it was just getting to have like a unique experience with like a, a, a creature that somehow felt like on your level. It, it's hard to describe, but like there's, you know, we were, we would learn about orcas um, every night after like we would go dive and we'd like listen to presentations on them. And they basically hunt everything in the world except there's never, I think, been an actual attack on human beings. Mm. There's been, like, a couple times where they've, like, sunk boats or, like, or take, you know, knocked off their, like, propellers and stuff like that. Um, but they've never attacked humans, and the question is, why? And that's something, like, our guides can never explain to us. And, like, they're, yeah. like, it could be that they're smart enough to know, like, don't don't mess with humans, or it could be that, like, they look at us and, like, that's something interesting that's intelligent and I'm not going to like, I like almost like respect it's, mm. you know, maybe I'm just like anthropom- oh gosh, anthropomorphizing. No, there's some word like that. <laughs> Definition. <where I'm>, yeah. <laughs> anthrop- <laughs> oh gosh. Where like, I'm just putting my like human traits on them. But like, I, there's something about it, man, where it's just like, I was, you know, in icy cold water and it, you can't see anything. And then out of the blue comes one of these things and you're like, four feet away from it and it's looking you in the eye. It like knows where your wow. eyes and it kind of stares at you for a second, turns towards you, like clicks at you and then swims away. And wow. yeah, wow. I read the first time I was, I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm dead. I'm the one that they're like, there's never been an attack until now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's there's an actual video of me going i want out i'm i'm, I'm done but that that was during so it was during a very special day we got very lucky so i'm again so i'm not a scientist but i'm going to try my best to explain this and please go do your own research if it interests you but basically um the orcas will chase all of the herring into what's called a bait ball and so all these like little prey fish are swimming around trying to stay safe in this like one area and then the orcas will come in from the side like hit them with like a tail smack and it'll basically stun the fish mm. and they'll get to like pick them up hmm. and so we were watching this and they had told us hey whatever you do don't get in the bait ball. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> they're, yeah. Like, they're like just stay out of their way let them let them eat let them do their thing and we're like yeah 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 and it sounds like you know you're like yeah for sure um, so much harder in practice when you're in, you know, like five foot swells, you're like getting blown away from the boat. It's freezing. It's dark. You're jet lagged. You have, you're sleeping on a boat. You got three hours of sleep. 
And I remember just kind of like being a little dazed. I'm like, I can kind of see an orca like a little over there. I was like, oh, I think I saw a dead like herring go floating by oh, me. No. I was like, huh, there must be a bait ball nearby. Oh, the bait ball is right below me. And then whoom, 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 whoom. Um, I posted <laughs> videos of it on my Instagram, but we didn't know that there were also humpbacks in the area. Mm. And the f- crazy, fascinating, like brilliant thing that they do is they capitalize on the hard work of the orcas. And so once they 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 chase them all, the herring into this bait ball, the humpbacks will come from like the depths, like 300 feet below and just swallow like the bait ball basically whole. And, and steal it from them. Start. And steal it from them. And the orcas can't do anything about it because it's a 90 foot, however many ton humpback. And <laughs> so that's what happened to me is I looked at him and went, huh, bait ball. Wait a second, what's that? And then boom, no. boom, 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 boom. Like four humpbacks I didn't even know were there. Dude. Came and there's like I I actually got clipped by one. Like not while they were eating, like, like it, after it, it had just you. swallowed, yeah, it swallowed and then kind of righted itself and then it's one of its flippers hit me and I was like, I, I was like, this is it. I'm done. I'm getting swallowed like Jonah style, like biblical. Yeah, like, dude. <laughs> I'm getting swallowed by the whale. Um, and yeah, there's videos of uh, me on GoPro screaming like, ah, because <laughs> that was the other thing was I was like popping my head up and I couldn't see anybody because the way is, but I could hear other people going, ah, ah, like freaking out. I was like, this is it. We're the one tourist group that will forever be remembered as dude. those guys that, yeah. I have a friend who's like deathly afraid of whales, like more than sharks. I, and like I get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like if he's listening right now, shout out Justin. But like he will be terrified. Yeah, I I, I gotta get these videos to him. Maybe I'll give them to you guys. I don't know yeah. if you wanna like pose them or it's like I'd love to see yeah, them. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. crazy. I'll I'll definitely show them to you guys, but like however ridiculous you think it is, like I promise it was so much scarier. Like right. and then I don't get scared. I've I've um you know, I'm a scuba diver, I've 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 dived with bull sharks and like I like I hunt I like I look for that stuff. Yeah. I want to see that stuff. I want to have those experiences. And this is one of those ones where I was like I, whew, I like I found that edge. You know, <laughs> it was like like the universe tested me on that day, and and we came out and it was such a rare experience that like our guides who had committed their whole lives to researching and being with these whales and having these just brief moments with them, like tw- like they've been doing it twenty years, like. Like we're so ecstatic. I think like, I think one of our guides said he was like, if I, this is his, his words, not mine. He was like, I think he said if, if if he slept with the entire Victoria's Secret like model lineup, he would be less excited than what had happened <laughs> oh, to him that day. Wow! Because he's dedicated his whole life to it. <laughs> big statement. I big say big if true. I don't. I you know. Um, but that's pretty good. And I was like, and I just like happened to be like the one goofball who didn't know it was just like bobbing in the middle of it getting like bashed around by whales and me and my buddy chris were like how do we like this is such an la thing to do but we're like how do we take the energy of that moment and be like we we did that we we got where the guys got clipped by whales and saw this and we're a part of this incredible thing that happens in life that few people get to witness it like how do we take that energy into our lives and be like Oh, we could do, we could do, we could do, we could do anything. Maybe, you know, yeah. after doing something like that, it's, it, it shook me. If you like capture that, like adrenaline in a bottle, right? Yeah. Like that feeling. Yeah. Of, like, holy hell, what is going on? Yeah. Yeah. I've like, I am small and like out of my depth and like, but at the same time when you, like making it through it and being like, I'm, I'm that guy who's going to be talking about this for like the rest of his life. I mean, how could you <laughs> yeah, not? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. was like, that li- it literally felt, I was like, oh, I, I, I peaked in that moment. Yeah. It was yeah. really, it was just something like Nat Geo level. Like I will never get this again, but like, how do I carry this energy of that into the rest of my world and creativity and confidence even? Right. Well, I mean, are you, are you planning more trips like that? Are you like chasing it now? Are you guys like, <laughs> Chris, yeah. where, where are we at? In? Um, I know, I know it at some point in my life, I want to be cageless with a great white. Mm. That's like, Oof. I think, I think I, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I, you gotta be real careful when you're, when you're, when you're looking for like that edge in life when like, I'm an ad- adrenaline junkie. I'm, you know, I think that's, but that's the ways out. Like I'm, I'm starting to think about like getting real specific about living, li- living a very like intentional <laughs> life and be like, if I want to do these things, like what, how do, how do I take the steps to get there? Um, so we got, we got some, 
Got some stuff we're planning. Well, I, damn, I'm excited for you just to like <laughs> see what you got planned. This is going to be like the moment where like <laughs> it cuts to like black and white and it freezes on me. And like one year later, <laughs> he had been seen eaten by a great white. <laughs> on, on the milk carton. Yeah. Um, well, no, I mean, we, you know, we talked about this pretty in depth with um, Brandon Cooks, NFL player, great guy. So he, he actually has a lot of like fun, creative hobbies. I mean, he's like, a pilot, he's got a pilot, yeah. photographer, all that. But we talked when we talked about traveling, we talked about how, like, for sure, it's you know, it's a privilege, absolutely. Yeah. But with air travel and airfares, you know, it, it is pretty open to a large section of the population. But sure, the way I look at it is you're experiencing other cultures and you're exper- you're seeing how other people live, and and I think that is the best perspective you can have in life. And just like you said, this is why it kind of reminded me of it is like, how can I bottle that feeling? And how can I, even on a lesser scale, even if you're not like being attacked by killer whales and (laughs) humpback, like how can I remember how these people lived? And, you know, even like, what do we eat for dinner? And like, what do we talk about? What's their daily routine? And I feel like that's so good for people to get perspective on like, okay, now I can take that back and, you know, use it on where I live and, you know, I'll be more accepting of other people because now I have seen it with my own eyes. And like, you know, I, I feel like that's a valuable skill with traveling. Don't you, don't you think? Yeah, no, definitely. I think traveling opens up your, your mindset, different, like you're saying, different cultures and different people and you get experiences that, you know, I have friends that still live in the same small town and, and no offense to them, but they kept a small mindset and that's not the case for everybody, yeah. obviously, but, but I'm from something like that, you know? And when I started traveling and seeing people, my, my eyes opened up to the world. It made me, I would say, made me kinder, more empathetic, you know, it made me more understanding of the world and, uh, even the stories I want to tell, you know, it's not just, you know, the little, a sm- it's not a small story anymore. It's a big one in the whole world and we're yeah. all connected in one way or another, you know? I think <clears throat> one of the best things that I got, you know, I got to learn through traveling is that there's, um, there's more to life, I think, sometimes than than we realize. Um, especially living in this like little microcosm of Los Angeles, or even just kind of um, the very like productive, focused kind of way of life, where it's sitting in commutes and e- e- this very like industrial lifestyle of like consumption and. All these things, and you know, for me, what was really nice, and I, I get so in my head sometimes about like how I know what I want to do and I'm I'm here to do, and how I don't always like get that chance because like as an actor, you maybe get to like I'm like I, I want to be doing it constantly. I'd love to be on set every single day, and I get to do it maybe point one percent of my life, and so it's nice to like like what am I doing with this other nine point ninety nine point nine percent of my of my life and. It's a nice reminder for me, like when I travel, that there's just, there's more to life that like, you know, if, if I never work again, like there's always, there's always other stuff. There's like people living far away who have very different lives than you, um, who find their own, their own purpose and their own meaning and their own happiness in a way that's like completely different than yours. And they have different like mindsets and different worldviews and different problems. And that like, they're all, they're all okay. Like these guys like living on, on the boat, just having just chasing that high of like getting to be with these creatures. I'm like, Oh, I could, I could go do that and like, and be happy. And like, there's more than like, uh, yes, I love storytelling and that's what I want to do. But like, you know, there is so much to this world and like, it gives you like a chance to like take a second, like appreciate what you have and appreciate what you don't have in a way that like, you know, like I'm, I'm jealous that those guys get to do that every day, but also like good for them. And I'm glad there are people doing that and like living yeah. their truth. Um, and it kind of like, that's, I think what travel is for me. Um, it's just like a reminder that there's just, the world is expansive and, and beautiful and reality is crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> just like, well, like sometimes I get blown away. I'm like, what a beautiful, crazy, scary, insane, wild world that like we live in and like if you get to experience it if you if you have the means to go and like see the world and live as much of life as you can and and be present um that's the beautiful thing yeah 
That's that's top that Brock. Top <laughs> that. <laughs> Boom at my drop. Cut uh, me off. You guys enjoy the rest of the podcast. I'm I've had a got, lot of caffeine today. I gotta I got go. Oh, that, <laughs> that was really well said. That's why I said that. Where do you buy your uh, where do you buy your coffee at the limitless shop, dude? Jeez. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does sound like it just took a limitless spell. <laughs> like, like, that's look. awesome. <laughs> I, dude, you you're exactly right, man. And that's I've always been fascinated by um uh people and our ability to even change our environment as well. You know, you look yeah. at animals, uh, you know, the, the, the orcas, the humpbacks, right? They yeah. have to live in the ocean. They have to stay there. You know, we can go live and do anything. So yeah. I've always been fascinated how like, you know, if, if you're in this bubble, um, it's, you know, someone I grew up with, with very little means and, you know, a small town kind of uh, lifestyle. And when I started to change that, you know, it changed my perspective, changed my mindset, changed the way I think. And, it, and it's like, that doesn't mean, you know, move to Paris and your whole entire mind and life is going to change. You're still going to bring your mindset. You're still going to bring, you know, some of your problems with you. But what happens is imagine you, if you go to a beach in the Bahamas, you know, it's, yeah. and, and you're actually able to ground in a way and you're able to get out of the chaos and industrialness of, of Los Angeles, whatever it may be, is that's something that's unique and special to humans alone, you know, and, and yeah. being able to experience those things is, is special in its own right. So if it's something that I find I need to do or I'm able to do, it's it's camping for me, man. It's going mm -hmm. out in the woods. It's grounding. It's it's shutting the world off and being somewhere that I have no cell service, you know, and I can't communicate even if I tried. Yeah. And f almost forcing my hand in a way that I'm going to recenter and then I'm going to come back and, and do what I need because for me, I know I need this. So um, that's one thing that, you know, it is fascinating to me. But um, uh, yeah, get, getting uh, out there and just like rem like reminding yourself like, oh, wait, th this is actually kind of what life was supposed to be like. Yeah. You know, I'm, I, everyone has their own like viewpoints, but I'm very much like we, you know, evolution, we are we were at one point meant to be very like tribal and yeah. like living off the earth. And now we've like removed ourselves like so far from that, that like, it's crazy sometimes being in nature and be like, well, I would be, this is where I'm supposed to be at all times. And my brain likes being here because it evolved to want to be here and be surrounded by trees. And it calms like the human psyche. And, and that's, you mentioned, you know, a spiritual experience when you're with the orcas and it's unique to us all, right? We all show up and uh, react to things differently and we all have different experiences. Like, like you know, some, some, some people might be more spiritual than others. Some might be more technological than others yeah. and whatever. And that's what's special about us too. But I feel like there is this element of, you know, when you're staring a deer in the face, you know, when you're staring an orca in the face, a, 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 some other creature, a lion, you know, like there's an energy there that you can't explain yeah. that we do. Like you said, we've evolved with it, this. So regardless if you want to acknowledge it or not, and we can keep going down more uh, more down the technological path and it's incredible to, you know, adapt and grow and to, you know, innovate and all that. Yeah, but, I, li I like my Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> no, yeah, don't get me wrong. I love I'm AC up, and I'm heating. Dude. Up wi -Fi. dude. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, yeah. But it's, yeah. it is good to remind yourself sometimes just like, oh, like yeah. I am just a human. Yeah. And like, yeah. I am yeah. out of my depth. Yeah. We, oh man. When I went to uh, Rwanda with, yeah my family like we kind of bounced around africa just you know typical safari with the with my father and a few other families but in rwanda we did the um gorilla trek oh in yeah the jungle. Wow. yeah and like it, we we had i can actually i have like footage of it like put it up um it was a false charge by a silverback gorilla like the alpha male of the group yeah. and it like knocked over our guide and one of the um parents that was there one of the fathers and like in that similar instance of like, it could easily kill you. Yeah. Right. Like it's the verge of death, but also it's like this really just powerful feeling of like being in nature and appreciation um, for life and, and all that good stuff. But that was kind of my only like real unique experience like that, where it's like, you could feel like that could be the end. <laughs> like, I, uh, I had a similar experience one time where uh, I actually false charged a silverback. <laughs> <laughs> and it was scared. It was terrified. <laughs> oh, uh, you gotta like, sometimes you just gotta laugh at like our, <laughs> our species and like the fact that like we get spiritual experiences from almost dying. Or it's right. just, oh, it's like, wild, yeah. We seek this out and it's just like, you know, some, philosopher probably has a lot more to say on it than me, but it's just an interesting thing that we're like, Oh cool. Like I almost got to die. And so now I can appreciate life, but like, yeah, I, I want to go do it again. Yeah. We just get so far removed from our bodies and our, our reality. And like, 
life and death that like sometimes you just need to, like a little spark of it to be like yeah. like ever since the like the humpback worker thing I'm like I'm so grateful to be here I thought I was dead and now I like every day I'm like I wake up I'm like <gasps> I'm not that. (laughs) Dude, I feel like uh, Tom Cruise would be like a good person to talk to about that, right? Oh, man. Yeah. He's like skydiving 50 times a day and like. Yeah. He might might be like broken from it. Like like now he like needs it. Like I could like once a year just a little top off on something, you know, (laughs) do a tall rock climb. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, He Uh, lives there now. He's like flying a prop plane with two two props and he's like, all right, we're going to blow these up and we're gonna see what we can do i'm gonna try to get out you know yeah that's wild man yeah Yeah. no it's true though i mean it's those those moments where you really have perspective and then the gratitude for life dude just to have a breath you know like this yeah Yeah. push pushes your boundaries that's for sure yeah that's cool man hell yeah we all learned something yeah (laughs) (laughs) exactly man try to nature it's all nature you mentioned rock climbing uh we saw a few shredded photos on the gram, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. What, what is, uh, tell us about, you know, your health and fitness. Do you got any tips and tricks? What do you, what do you do? Yeah. Um, like again, I'm trying to like untie the, the, the results off from like my, my current lifestyle. So like there, yeah, there's there, I know what you're referring to. There was like a, a photo shoot I did back in the day. I think it was like for like people, this was like maybe six months in the pandemic. I like needed something to do. So I just got like, jacked at home dude yeah. like, i was working with um a, like a friend of mine who's also a trainer and we we're just doing like backyard style like workouts and like i cut down like seven percent body fat and like yeah. we did this like this photo shoot and in, in our minds a lot of it was um trying to have some sense of like agency and control over the fact that like you know my show had just ended and now we're in pandemic and nobody knows what's going on with the acting world and so for me, it was like, that was results focused where I was like, yeah, I cut down to hit new PRs, personal records and got to 7% body fat. And like, I want to look like a superhero. So Hollywood would see me as like a, like a person who could like play that kind of thing. Um, and you, you know, the world doesn't <laughs> work like that. When you want it to is like, it, it can sometimes some people are very lucky, but like a lot of times it's just like, it's patience and and so I kind of, I actually fell out of working out and climbing for a while and I'm, mm. I'm getting now back into it with like new, new focuses in mind, just like to move every day to like feel good, to like get yeah. the endorphins, um, to just like generally be healthy because like I, I, I joke about it, but like I want to live forever. I know it's impossible, but like I want to shoot for it because like I love being here and like God, the coolest thing I think I could do is like live to a hundred because I just I like being I like being here. I like being alive. Um, Oh yeah. And so just like to move every day. And so that's kind of where I'm at is like one, like my body's starting to slow down and I know that's, (laughs) yeah, I know that's silly because I'm, I'm 24, but I I, I know, yeah, I know, but I know it gets, I know it gets worse because all my friends are older than me. Like all my friends are in their thirties and uh, not Chris yeah. is still beautiful. <laughs> yeah, absolutely <laughs> but, lucky dog. Like you want to get started young. And so I don't have to like work through like body problems when I'm older, but just like, how do I keep my body like fresh and healthy? My ligaments strong. And so mm-hmm. like my heart strong moving for at least an hour every day. And whether it's weightlifting or yoga or swimming or surfing, or just trying to be, athletic so I can just have a healthy and happy body and tie it less on more like I've got to this number or I got, you know, lifted this much or because I was, you know, looking good, I got this project and we're just like, no, this is a time that I get to set aside for me. It's good, man. There's definitely a big misconception with, with health and fitness too. With like, like you're saying with getting to a certain body, body fat percentage or looking a certain way or whatever it may be is, some of those people who are, you know, quote unquote, the most in shape, at least visually looking, are yeah. some of the most unhealthy people, man. Yeah. And, and if when you really change your perspective on what health is, what you're eating, what you're putting in your body, how you're moving, yeah, that's something I talked about with Will too, just just yesterday, really. Um, working through Being an injury. Well needs it. No, no, no. If it's for me, um, because. <laughs> but working through an injury, and um, yeah. during the pandemic, I had uh, two and a almost three herniations in my neck, oh, uh, torn God. meniscus and fractured patella all at the same time. So yeah. my whole body was out of whack and I stopped moving 
And then I started eating a little crappier and I started, then I got, I really got out of shape and I was just, it just kept getting, and then once I stopped moving, all the rest of my stuff started hurting more and more and more and just kind of added up and added up and added up. And so now, um, working through an injury right now, actually, it's one of the things that my uncle told me, which I really appreciated. He'd been blown up multiple times in Iraq. He was in the military for 25 years, special forces. He's a badass. Uh, but he's like, what happens when you stop moving? And I'm like, um, I don't know what, I mean, you, you, obviously you stop moving, but what do you mean? He's like, you're dead. When you're not moving anymore, you're dead. And when he said that to me, you know, it, it gave me a perspective of like, okay, if I have the ability to move, even if it's just moving my wrist around or going on a walk or whatever it may be, whatever the, the scale of that yeah. is, I should move. I should celebrate my body and whatever I can do with it, you know, as much as possible, even if I am injured or, or limited at the time, but keep continuing to work on that healthy path, whatever it may be. So that's something to, to your point too, is just staying, you know, moving. But I do like the results based and like the having a goal because <laughs> yeah, I for, some, for some people it works. For some people it works. Because yeah. like before going to Europe, like pre pandemic, um, you know, I was like working with a nutritionist to try to get as low body fat as I could. Yeah. And, I, and you got me beat. I, I got down to like 10. That's awesome. Which yeah. is like, and by the way, like for people that don't know about this, like 10 to 7 is so much harder than 13 to 10. Yeah. Um, and like, yeah. that's why, you know, professional athletes are usually 10 or sub 10. Yeah. Right. Like it's typically in that, yeah. in that area. So like, that's really impressive that you were able to get to seven because I can only get to 10, <laughs> but like I didn't sustain it. Right. I get yeah. to Europe and I'm eating pasta and it's actually harder to gain weight with like healthier food out there in Europe. Yeah. Um, without all like the American process stuff. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, it, I got to a goal and then I just didn't maintain it at all. And, you know, just kind of slowly got back to whatever my steady one is, but like, it is good to have those goals. I really, yeah. I really think so. And like, like Brock's saying, like you eventually just get to a point where you cruise at like a healthy place. Like both of you actually said, like, keep moving, you know, keep going. But, but yeah, I think there's like value to both is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I guess like, um, I think starting off, maybe a lot of times like having goals like help you because I'm like, I just need to like, the goal is just to stand up and go on a walk. Like it's good. Like I'm like, I need to go on a walk every day. Like it's great to have goals like that. Just always know that eventually like the goals aren't like the end in itself. Like eventually your mind yeah. to just keep you on this path is going to have to switch. And like before it was like, I just like, I needed to walk so I could cross off the goal list. And when you realize like the crossing off on the list of like, reach 7% body fat or like lifted this or swam a mile or whatever it was like that wasn't you, you think like at the end of like, like I had a, my best friend just ran like a marathon. Yeah. And then at the end he was like, I, what? <laughs> like I trained so hard to get this, like this feeling of like, I crossed the finish line and he's like, and I crossed the finish line and everyone's in pain and grabbing their hammies. And like, <laughs> yeah. like why, yeah. are, why are we doing this to ourselves? Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel any better for like being able to say like, I ran a marathon because like I, I had that goal in mind. Whereas like what he's like, I, what I should have been doing like the entire time while I was running the marathon is like being proud and grateful that I'm doing this thing and getting to do it as opposed to being like, that's the finish line. I think like whenever you can like, take time to like be present in life is when like things like line up like that. And I guess I'm, I'm more just like, I'm like, I, I'm just at a point where I'm like, I can't believe I made it to the gym. I'm like, let's yeah. go. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Getting to the gym is like an accomplishment no matter yeah. what you do. And like people forget a marathon was basically the Greek army had the Persian army coming in to invade and they had to send someone back to Athens for reinforcements. Yeah. And it was like a life or death situation to like save their civilization. Yeah. It wasn't like yeah. something yeah. we should do yeah. all the yeah. time. Yeah. And well, like, you know, like um, you know, we're um, not, we're not running to save our society. Yeah. Yeah. Just, it's a great goal. We like, it. like I'm not hating on it. I'm just like, and, you know and, what I mean? and the further story on that point too, is that the marathon is that he was so exhausted after this guy, he laid down. Yeah. And because he stopped after running all that way, he died. His heart stopped. Yeah. Just to keep yeah, it going. So, it's yeah. a, so keep that in so, mind. So keep moving. Keep, keep moving, guys. <laughs> I love running. I don't run. I, I, I really love running. I need to get back into it. I like, I get that runner's high and feel yeah. so effing good. But like, I, I would never, you know. Yeah. 
I, I'm old. I'm 32. So like, I gotta take care of my knees and my back. I, yeah. I, you you're know. gonna you're gonna get yelled at online now for saying you're old at 32. Dude. <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to know what they yeah. think about me. Before yeah. yeah. Anymore. Right. <laughs> you're like, oh, your body hurts. Though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, oh, man. But cool. but you know we are habitual creatures, so it really comes down to our our daily habits, what we do, man. And yeah. that's that's the sum of our life to a degree. You're not yeah. completely, but you know. It's like what uh, you did. Yeah. I just try to stay healthy. You know, drink your water. You know, and, uh, stay <laughs> on top. limiting myself one cup of coffee a day, so I'm not a crazy person. And, and just moving. Yeah, man. Well, and dude. celebrating our, our body and our time and the fact yeah. that we're here. And the, love that. Yeah, absolutely, man. And that's what we should do. You know, it's we're lucky to be here. We're here for a brief time, whether yeah. it's a hundred years or not. What, whatever my soul is is stuck in this weird meat capsule that is my body. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> and so, man. like, might as well treat it right because it's what I got. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's the car we get to drive in the road of life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. What, uh, so you, you know, we talked a lot about some of the creative stuff you're working on. Like, what can people look forward to from you? Like, what do you got kind of coming in the pipeline? Great, great question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I gotta like, I, some of it I've gotta kind of keep a little bit on like the, the, the DL. DL. I can like tell you guys as soon as like we wrap here, but, um, you know, I, I think that like every, th there's yet to be a format that does not have interest in like to me. So like I've got like one group of like friends that I'm like we're working on like comic stuff as well, and then oh hell yeah, you know one group of friends where we're like screw it, we'll write a rom com, and the like like one thing that I'm doing right now just like on my own time is like writing a Norwegian language horror film because like no way. I just like everything. I love like, that. Like everything I try, I'm like I, like, I like all forms of like storytelling and you just had to have so many like ovens in the fire. And so like, hopefully like, yeah, if you continue to follow my career, I don't know if you have until this point, but if you want to keep <laughs> following it, it's kind of like, hopefully just like get to see, hopefully you'll get a weird trip into my brain of the things that I think about. And like, you know, I really use creativity be like, Here's where my mind goes when I'm trying to sleep at night. I think about what would a horror movie be like in Norwegian. Uh, <laughs> I'm such a big like horror movie fan. I love that. Oh my god, I can't wait to talk. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna pitch you this one. It's funky, man. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that's awesome, man. Yeah. So just uh, just creativity and whatever I can get made and convince people to help me make and you know i'll always put it out there even if it's not good Hell yeah. <laughs> just you know stay tuned stuff's coming perfect <laughs> great, dude. well dude that was a lot of fun i had a good time i might have i ramble a lot so i hope no. uh hope i made sense to some people out there but absolutely uh, yeah. yeah you uh you won up those few times but it's all right dude I appreciate that you hey, coming man, on that's what i came for <laughs> yeah man. this is my podcast now yeah take it over <laughs> yeah. oh man I appreciate you coming on, man. It's awesome. It was a fun ride. It's been a been a fan of yours for a long time, oh, and thanks, uh, excited to see the stuff coming. And just yeah. grateful to have you here, man, for thank this guys, moment right thank now. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Thanks for watching Studio Twenty Two. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell. Thanks for tuning in to Studio Twenty Two.